Show. Welcome to VCR Party. The yeah. show. You want to do it, Nick? Yeah, this is the show where we watch uh, all 11,000 videos in our collection. Well, with me is Joe. You are next to a plasma ball again. This is a yeah, no, I'm back at uh, our buddy Jakester's place and uh, set up down here. And um, he's like, Do you want to get the plasma ball rocking? I was like, Yeah, I do. Let's do it. It requires him bringing in an extension cord <laughs> to run it into the other room because oh. there's not an outlet nearby. But he I mean, yeah, there's it's the It's a special, part. special night because normally we're just seeing pipes. We're seeing a dusty Bowflex, but when, when the plasma ball is going, I mean, the, the, future's a, the future has arrived. Knocking. Yeah. Touch this. I touch it. It's attracted to my hand. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't, it? doesn't even hurt. <laughs> who isn't? By the way, that's George. It's George who said who isn't. And I'm told that people have a uh, contest to see the first time George will speak in an episode. And uh, so they, they got an early one now. Um, and that's, I, I bet on me for that, that I had to put myself in there. Oh, okay. That's why you had to interject there. You're the teller of the show, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we don't say shut up, George, for nothing. Um, and Steve, uh, I noticed your background is pretty shameless today. What's going on? Well, sadly, uh, nobody bought Sellout Steve's Zoom background, so not oh. one person even made an offer. So I figured I've got to step up my game, so I'm advertising for myself today. And uh, we actually, uh, I made a commercial um, to try to sell people to try to drum up some business. So if you all guys right. have a second, I'd love to play my commercial. Yeah, that's I mean, that's, that's what people come to the show for, so by all means. To be, to be advertised to. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> by just me, yep. yeah. Here we go. Cheese, cheese. Hi, welcome to Sell Out Steve's Background Sale. No one sells Zoom backgrounds for less. Are you looking to promote your business? Say hello or happy birthday to a special friend? Please, allow my Zoom background to do all the work. While supplies last, you can plaster the image of your choice all over my VCR party backgrounds. For details, email info at foundfootagefest.com. Very professional. Oh, Cheat. Yeah, I'm really hoping that this will drum up some business because no, so far nothing. If not, are, are you send that out uh, on TV too? Is there going to be a TV ad too? Or are you just doing it just here on this show? That's a good idea. I'm gonna I'm gonna write that one down. You should Let's actually see, do uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you Apex think we'll get a uh, copyright one. notice for that John Philip Sousa march, or do you think we're um, good? Well, it wasn't from the place where I got it from, and then I sped it up by ten percent. So I'm hoping the algorithm <laughs> can't figure it out. <laughs> Fantastic. The perfect That's a crime. Start. Uh, but like, I guess we, we formally will start with a Found Footage Festival classic. You caught me with my pants down, but no one sells carpet or waterbeds for less. Yeah, so this one this week, we wanted to, we, we have a very special guest here on the show today, and we wanted to tie in uh, the Found Footage Festival classic with this guy. Um, so what was it, Nick? T 10 years ago? 10 years ago, we did these morning news pranks where... We would get on. We would try to get on these uh, morning news shows for ourselves as Found Footage Festival when we were, whenever we were touring, and most people know the story. I'll just I'll tell the whole story anyway. And uh, we'd send up press releases, and we'd get on. We talk about found footage. We would get on Wake Up Sacramento. Well, then we started writing fake ones, and the first one we did was for Kenny Stresser, the Yo-Yo Expert. We wrote up a, a press release saying that we represented a guy who toured around the country to schools teaching kids about the environment with his yo-yo. And we got him on seven morning news shows. Then we did Chef Keith. We got uh, Nick played a uh, celebrity chef who had just written a book on what to do with your Thanksgiving leftovers. Sent him out after Thanksgiving, got him booked on five. Well then, what was it, three or four years ago, yeah. we wrote up a new one 
and we're like, let's, let's push the boundaries of stupidity even further. And this time we called her, we said that we were a strong man duo. We called ourselves chop and steel. And um, this one was a slam dunk. It was a total yeah, slam dunk. Yeah, and in the press release, we said that we had won America's Got Talent. So this was always an experiment. Like, are the news uh, stations paying attention? And clearly they weren't because we got booked on a dozen news stations. They all wanted on the strongman duo promoting unity. I mean, we didn't even come up with a good pitch. No, it was very lazy. Like, we yeah. went into this one, like, very lazy. And we did three of them, and then we took a, a break. And then three months later, we found out in the New York Post we were being sued in federal court for fraud yeah. and conspiracy and copyright infringement. Um, yeah. But, but, like, when we first sent out those press releases, like, I got a dozen responses back saying, yeah. like, we would love to have the strongman duo on the show. It was probably the most successful in terms of how many we sent out versus how many yeses we got of any of the news appearances. Yeah. So uh, it cut short, unfortunately, but yeah. Yeah. So I cut together a montage of the best of Chop and Steel. And uh, here we go. Coming at you live. You're watching Hello, Wisconsin. Hello, Wisconsin. This is WEAU 13 News. Been waiting for this all show long. I know. I'm excited. <laughs> so strongman duo Chop and Steel are here in studio. Well, an impressive feat by our strongman duo and what they're doing to educate people. That is coming up. We found some sticks, actually, in your in your parking lot. <laughs> and, this is uh, all it takes. We're going to reverse roles here. Okay. I'm Chop, but this time he's going to be doing the chopping. Okay, these are, sounds good. Normally you say, don't try this at home. Go ahead and try these at home. Okay. One. All right, perfect. Two. Three. This is a little big. Three. Four. Okay. Ready? Yep. One. Five. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. Four. <laughs> Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Twenty. Okay. Six, Six seven, seven, eight, eight 22, 22, 23, 24, 24 25. Yeah. This yeah. is just basic turbo gravy that you would have in your house. There you yeah. go. Right. After. And I can do double duty with this one. There you okay. go. Yeah. Go up high. Yep. Oh, oh, sorry. Yikes. Sorry, sorry, it's all sorry, right. Sorry. We got it. We got it. And there it is. Best yeah. of shop and steel. And the, so people who don't know the, the end of the story was basically we found a lawyer who li lives in my neighborhood named uh, Anderson. And is and, friends with George. And is he George, was friends we, with George. Did we meet George because of Anderson? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. And uh, after about a year of being harassed by the uh, news station in Atlanta that owns like 100 stations and, and didn't find it that funny, uh, they dropped the, the suit, basically. They uh, were demanding all these things from us. We said no, and we came out on top. So yeah. Uh, we settled out of court, never went to trial, yeah. and uh, we, we considered a win. It was a big win. I mean, we, we're acting like tough guys now, but you should have seen us uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> we were back then. Almost uh, us. And for those who donated to help keep us afloat, that's why we're still talking right now. I, th I, think, that, uh, I think that was the reason that they sued us. They just wanted to make us sweat a little bit. Don't you think that was it? I think that they got what they wanted out of it. Probably, like, yeah. They made us squirm for about a year, and they knew they had more money than we did. So, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know that we learned our lesson. No. Yeah, I think we have other, other plans that we can't talk about yet. But uh, Yeah, we've been put on hold because of the stupid pandemic. But yeah, uh, yeah we, we did do one uh, about a year and a half ago. And uh, it, it went okay. But we, we still have, we, we want to do more, but we, yeah, but we can't. But we yeah. will. So. All right, so more to come on that. But the reason we brought this up is because of our special guest today. It's Harmon Leon. And uh, Harmon... We met because when we first started doing found footage in 2005 or so, he was working for, what was Wired. it? Wired. Wired magazine. magazine. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he lived in San Francisco and he interviewed us for that, did a profile on found footage when nobody really knew who we were. And we sort of stayed in touch over the years. And this dude is interesting because he also does stuff that kind of screws with tv and media he does a lot of tv infiltration stuff and uh, when he interviewed us i think he interviewed us in 2005 right when we were starting up found footage but we didn't know that this dude like did all this stuff like he got onto judge shows he got onto uh, uh game shows and he'd go by himself like i can't imagine going by myself like i i need 
I need this Nick by my side. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> I get scared. Yeah, exactly. So uh, anyway, yeah, we found out he did all this cool stuff. He's written so many books. He's produced uh, films like uh, the Sudden Birth video. We talk about it. Uh, we've talked about the Sudden Birth film a lot, the police training instructional video. Um, he produced a movie about that and a bunch of other cool stuff. So I was so excited to get an interview with him. Yeah, so coming up, Harmon. And by the way, I just want to mention, you'll see it. He also was on a prank show with O.J. Simpson. So don't go anywhere. We're going to show <laughs> clips from that at the end. Uh, here's our uh, our piece with Harmon Leon. Come on, let's see your raviolis. Show us 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 your raviolis. Hi, Harmon. Hey, how are you? Good to see you guys. Good, thank you. Good, good to see you too. Uh, hey, so we want to talk about all your TV infiltration stuff, but first, I just realized that you were a producer on Sudden Birth, which is yeah. which is uh, the most incredible safety film of all time. Um, and I was I've been hoping for so long that somebody would do a documentary about that. So thank you for doing a documentary about Sudden Birth. Yeah, thanks. It was uh, uh, my friend Scott Colonico, who I collaborate with a lot. Uh, he directed it, and uh, it's basically kind of a 1960s era police training film of what you do if you come across a woman having birth. Yeah, but the and, thing and is, they graphically show you for it, about 10 minutes. They actually show it, and for people, we've shown this so many times on our we show have, because yeah. we're absolutely yeah. obsessed with it. Uh, but I, I, I look for any excuse just to show a clip. So uh, I'm going to show a clip from Sudden Birth uh, right now. So uh, here is a clip from Sudden Birth. Um, please instruct no, Don't worry, lady. Everything is going to be all right now. Why don't you do something? Can't you help her? Can't you give her something? I've called for an ambulance. Now it's up to nature and our little mother here. <laughs> Oh, what was that? The blur usually isn't there. Please calm right. down. Wipe her forehead. <laughs> you support the baby and keep it clear of any waste. And hold on to it. They're slippery. Oh. You're a beautiful mother. Thank you. You too. I'd like to thank you too, officer. Both of you. I was sure worried. Me too. Oh, <laughs> sudden birth. It's so good. Oh, wait, what's the, what's the movie called? I watched it, but what is the movie called? And where can people find it? Yeah, it's everything you wanted to know about sudden birth, but are afraid to ask. I believe it's up on probably Scott's uh, YouTube page, Scott Kalanico. So. Oh, yeah, and I saw it. I was on the Alamo Draft House um, on oh, demand right. thing, too. So, do, yeah, that's do, where I saw it. Do you think yeah. it's weird? Do, do, is it weird that we have to censor out? Uh, of a vagina that's giving birth. Is it weird that we have to do that? Because it's not like, na that's nature, right? Yeah. Like, and, like and, what's behind you right now? It's just like what's behind you right now. It's nature. Yeah. And plus, you know, that is, it's educational that if you actually were a police officer and you came across a woman having birth on the side of the road, after watching that video, you would know how somewhat to deliver a baby. Totally. Yeah, you wouldn't know how to act, but uh, <laughs> you couldn't yeah, act it out very well, but you could probably do it. Yeah, and crazy trivia, like, so there, that um, police officer was actually a real-life doctor and a set of twins that were both doctors and both played professional tennis, I believe, in Wimbledon. What? That's the craziest part to me. And, and one of them had a goatee, and well, that was the evil yeah. one. That's how you could tell. But... <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was. It's such a weird story. You have to watch this documentary. Did you ever, Did you guys ever try to track down the baby that was given birth to in it? Yeah, I believe Scott tracked him down. So he lives in uh, San Francisco, and all their family members wanted to talk about it. You know, they wanted to talk about you know the the doctors. Like you know, that's just again, it's like sort of um, you know, it's just a cross section of their life. That was just like a blip, like maybe you know a couple days shooting for these doctors to play these police officers you know yeah. kind of forgotten in their history because they went on and were kind of really noted uh, uh, uh doctors they're, they're actually the first doctors in san francisco to say you know what i i don't think it's a good idea to let people smoke in hospitals <laughs> yes, <exactly. laughs> so, yeah so you know again it, they it was like a forgotten blip in their history. Uh, so they were happy to uh, talk about it, it. But the kids well-adjusted, though. 
Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't know why he would be, but I mean, he's not like the, the world and... got to his head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, the again, world. he peaked early, like Orson Welles at twenty-five, <laughs> yeah. he peaked in uh, sudden birth at birth. Right. <laughs> exactly. We we mentioned this up up top, but um, I remember you interviewed us for Wired magazine, yeah. and uh, shortly after that, I think you came out with the book, The Harmon Chronicles, right? The yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that was back in San Francisco at the Roxy Theater. Yeah. yeah, it was like 2005, I think, or something, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. That was a while ago. But I remember reading your book, and I was fascinated by the fact that you were able to infiltrate so many places, like Scientology, and uh, and also a lot of TV game shows and things like that. Yeah, so that, I mean, amongst many other things, um, I, you know, the, the shtick was go out undercover in disguise and pose as subcultures, posing as one of them. So like you said, everything from like Scientologists to um, like more lately, like white supremacist hate groups to uh, um, there was an era when I would just do um, reality TV shows. And there was like this window of time where it was so easy to get on reality TV shows. Would, every week would put postings up on Craigslist and you basically pretty much would just have to answer the ad and be convincing. And then they would fly you to LA to be on said reality tv show now is this fun for you to do this or is this nerve-wracking or is it material to write about like why do you why do you do it i mean we've oh, done yeah. it too so we have our yeah, reasons yeah, yeah, but yeah. i'm just curious as to what your reasons are oh yeah yeah so always it ends up in a story uh you know publication or usually ends up uh in the long run in um like book form, but with the video stuff, I've used it in like live performance shows where I incorporate telling the story and then, you know, cuts and clips of, you know, said footage from reality TV show from like, uh, like I infiltrated a game show with the sole intent of being the worst contestant <laughs> in the history of the game. Was that whammy? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, but as irony would serve, I ended up winning tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> Uh, it was crazy. it was like the one thing where I was gonna be like uh, there was like this great SCTV skit where I think it's called like Half Wits, you know? And oh yeah, like yeah, Jeopardy. And so I was gonna be like that, but I answered like the first question and it was like incredibly easy, and I got like, <laughs> I got, oh my god! And then like, Change of plans. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I have a clip from the one that made me laugh. Maybe it's, it's, it might be my favorite. I can't decide which one's my favorite, but this one right now is probably my favorite. Lie Detector. Mm. When you're on Lie Detector, it's a show I didn't even know existed. Yeah, but... so the premise of that show was they hook people up to a lie detector to prove that they've been wronged in a situation. They want to correct the situation and prove they've been wrong, except I lied to get on the show. <laughs> Yes. Right. I think that ad, that and Craigslist said something like, uh, you know, are, have you been in prison? Question mark. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lie detector wants to hook you up to a lie detector to prove that you were, you know, wrongfully accused. So, no, I, I haven't seen this one. I'm excited so, to watch this. I don't think, so I edited just what you have on your website, but mm -hmm. I, I think maybe it's, you came up with this whole backstory of this guy who uh, was on parole and then he smoked, he got in a fight, and then, uh, what was it, he, he oh, secondhand in inhaled yeah. uh, uh, marijuana, and he tested positive for a test, and that, that's what the lie detector was going to be for. So I didn't include all that setup, but yeah. I included just your lie detector moment. So did, did, did I explain it well? Is that the... Yeah, explain it well. Um, I'll okay. let you show the clip, and then uh, I think my favorite thing is... Um... They like um, I made up this fabricated story, so they actually hired an actor for the recreation of my yes. story. So I actually, <laughs> yes, I actually provided work to out of work Hollywood actors. I was wondering if that was you playing that character, but now no, I know that it wasn't. Like an audition. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think that's in here. But here's your performance on uh, Lie Detector. Thank you come to us today claiming mm. that you absolutely did not use any illegal no. drugs while on probation. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely not. First of all, I want to prove it to like my friends and family, that sort of thing, because you know, it's not, it doesn't look that good when you're locked up again for 20 days. And second, I want to prove it to my parole officer that um, I wasn't doing it. And then third, I just want to prove it to myself. Are you ready to face the lie detector? You look yeah. yourself. You sure? Um, yeah, I'm ready to face the lie detector. Let's get you hooked up. Okay, let's do it. Are you sure you're ready to? Sure Remain still. The test is about to begin. <laughs> That's sad. 
We advise Hank any attempted countermeasures will invalidate this test. Hank. Are you now sitting down? Yes. Did you do marijuana while on probation last January? No. <laughs> this test is over. Remain still for 10 seconds, please. Hank, the lie detector has determined that you are. Hank, you're telling the truth. Hey! <laughs> I knew it, because I was truth. telling the truth. You were telling yeah. the truth. Hank, this is a really big day for you. You've yeah. been vindicated. Mm -hmm. What do you say to your parole officer? Oh, it's me. You're a small little potato head. <laughs> and what about to all the naysayers? What do you say to them? You're even smaller potato heads, because I proved myself right. <laughs> 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 so you were telling the truth about that lie you were telling, right? I was telling the truth about, I, it's hard to figure that out. That's a crime. Was I telling the truth about a story I made up? Or <laughs> I mean, essentially it's a lie because it's not a real thing that happened. And then, but they don't care, right? They don't give a shit. Well, they actually did the lie detector, the actual lie detector before the taping. So I went to, I think it was a Dr. Ed, um, he was actually the guy who administered John Brene Ramsey's parents' lie detector. That guy who was, yeah, who was yeah, very yeah, serious? Yeah. Dr. Ed Gelb, I think that's his name. So I went to his office and then did the lie detector there, and then they kind of staged it for the cameras. Oh, man. So that they're lying too, basically, that that's happening live with yeah. the cameras. I okay. think there's a lot of lying going on at the lie detector yeah. show. It's almost like lie detectors don't work. Yeah, then I wrote the story up and the producer was just so, <laughs> I just really? imagine just like whistles coming out of his ears. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were surprised too, is that nobody really, like if you give, give it a couple seconds to die down, people will stop vetting everybody, you know, within months of something breaking out like that, you know, like it's just people have a very short memory. Well, well, in college, Nick and I would watch the Jenny Jones show every single day. Mm -hmm. and they'd always have the thing on there. It's like, if you had a roommate who cheated on yeah. your girlfriend or something like that, we would always call it up and be like, we got it. And they would always be like, great, come on down here. And then, I don't know, I think it happened once. And then we, yeah. we couldn't find somebody to do the bit with us. But we were surprised at how easy it was. We were 19 years old in college, mm -hmm. and we were able to get on the show. I mean, we didn't actually do it, but... Yeah. I mean, five shows a day, you're just looking for content, you know, that's what yeah, it is. Yeah, they just have, like, so much time to fill. They, it's like, with these things, is they, they want you to be that person. Yes. Like, it's their job, if it's like, you're probably, like, a lower level on the production staff, and your job is to find that person. So once when someone answers the ad and says, I'm that person, it's like, yeah. oh, you made my work easy. And what, what do they pay you for that? Oh, I, like I got off the plane and they gave me like an envelope of money, like $300 and then like a hotel in Santa Monica, like for two nights and flew okay. from uh, when San Francisco was living. At the ah, time. Yeah. That's not, not a bad, bad deal. Yeah. 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 Uh, but oh, this, this one is, this one's so good too. The Judge Joe Brown show. You get on yeah. that. And uh, the premise that you, the, the setup for this was so brilliant. It was such a slam dunk that there's no way they could say no to it. And I think you said, you, you guys made like a documentary, like the steps, the six steps of getting onto a judge show. And yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. And Scott, Scott, uh, who I uh, uh, produce documentaries with, he's the sidekick on, uh, on Judge Joe Brown. Yeah, but you, you guys were saying that there was a bidding war, or, or I don't know if it was a bidding war, or like they were fighting <laughs> over you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it was like, I was, um, so I called like tons of, or I contacted through their website, tons of, uh, these courtroom TV shows, and everyone wanted the case because it was just ridiculous. Why don't you set it up? Because I don't know if it's set up that well in this clip that I'm about to show. Yeah, yeah. So the premise was it, it was my friend's bachelorette party. Um, so we gave them money to hire strippers, and when it came time to take it off, they they weren't chicks; they were dudes. Yep. Simple, simple early two thousand premise that kind of. They wanted to exploit my story, and then it's like, oh my god, we'll. And they they're bad mouthing the producers of the other shows, you know. So and you have that all. You have that all in the documentary. Everybody yeah. So I just basically just recorded all the calls. 
Please raise your right hand. Salesman Hank Leonard is suing his friend for a refund on bachelor party strippers. Defendant Mike Colonico says his friend couldn't take a joke. Plaintiff says that the defendant uh, was given a sum of money. $700 as I paid him. All right. The defendant, according to this complaint, was supposed to provide some strippers. He went out and procured the service of said same strippers, or was it plural? Uh, two, two strippers. Two strippers. Okay, now. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. And that's, that's Scott from, uh, he directed uh, Sudden Birth, right? Yeah, Southern Birth, uh, uh, that's Scott Colonico, yep. Okay, I, okay. What happened? And Tell me what happened. Everybody's getting worked up. Everybody's doing, yeah, go on, take it off, take it off. What well, happened when it got taken off? They weren't chicks, they were oh. dudes. <laughs> <laughs> the plaintiff didn't specify what the, the wait gender Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. It's a bastard party, you like how you were having a good time. You were having a good time. Well, I put, okay. put it this way, you know, it's like I'm paying him to go buy oranges and he comes back with bananas. <laughs> yeah. I didn't pay for bananas. Man. Peaches and he comes back with bananas. Yeah. Okay, well, the I joke, did, joke, I, joke, I, I didn't say joke. that, but that's a good pun. That's one of them. See, he was having a pretty good time. Two of them. <laughs> now, how come you had all these lap dances? Uh, I object to that, Your Honor. That's what do you mean idea. you He's object to that? that. He's the one. Well, I guess you'll object to this. 700 in your court cost. <laughs> Judgment accordingly. Oh, man. You won. It's so good. It's you won. So good. Yeah, we won uh, $800. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, and a pages? trip to L.A., and we got put up at the Riot Hyatt on Sunset Boulevard. Oh, man. And, and they solved your problem for you, too. So that was nice of them. Yeah, yeah. Again, they just wanted to exploit our case. And uh -huh. uh, Judge Joe Brown, uh, another, again, another trivia about him. He served on the James Earl Ray appeal, or the James Earl Ray uh, case. What? Yeah, he kind of, and then now like he's, then he's he was, a legit judge at, at one point. Yeah, yeah. So, but they must like make. I mean, Judge Judy's one of the richest women on the earth right now, right? So these shows, these syndicated shows, just must like pay too good to not like take, even if you're a respected judge. And there's a million of them too. Yeah, they just like crank out like you know five of them in a day. Right. <laughs> All it is is a courtroom and then, you know, people in the audience, really. Yeah. But people, again, it's like people think those are actual legal cases. It's not. It's like, like what they do is the producers do, they, they go and they look at court cases and they will call the case and go, do you want to fight this out in court and maybe lose and then you're going to have to pay the money or do you want to come on the Judge Joe Brown show and we'll fly it to LA and either way we'll pay the case. Right. So, yeah, but people actually think, the you know, like Judge Judy, those are actual a legal court. It's just what, fake TV court. Yeah. <laughs> so what 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 is it like the night before you go on to one of those? I know for Nick and I, like we couldn't sleep because we we're so nervous the entire time. Is that like, like, like nervous or like uh, like Christmas mornings tomorrow, like excited? <laughs> I'm always just excited. It's, a little it's bit not, of that. It's not so much like I'm I'm afraid we're gonna get arrested. It's more like I hope that this is like a one time shot. We have these lines that we want to get in, mm -hmm. and I I just don't want to freeze up when I get on there yeah. and forget some of these lines. That's that's the biggest part, for for me at least. Yeah, I mean it's like that. You sort of plot it out. You know, you kind of know where you want the gags, and then kind of where you want the story to go. You know, yeah. like be it lie detector or um, you know that, and then you know I've done like uh, uh, there was a show on Blind Date. I went on that one. The yes. Show. So, you know, again, it's like, I know I want, there's a bunch of gags I want to do. Like, so that I wanted to mid date change into German leader Hosen. I watched, I watched some of that one too. You just don't even give a shit on that one. You just like, <laughs> yeah. you just like throw it all out there. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. And then they threw it on me. It was like, I, I claim to be like a competitive eating champion in the butter category. And so then they came like dinner time and they came out, guess what we got? And they, <laughs> they got six of butter. <laughs> So they just sat in front of me and she was kept, kept talking. I just kept picking them up and just like not even acknowledging I was eating or just kind of just listening and just kind of kept jamming like sticks of butter into my mouth. Brilliant. <laughs> and I got the smooch at the end. 
So oh, like, oh, wow, not yeah. bad. And, and, and then when, like, game theory on it, I go, okay, if you're going to be on these um, reality dating shows, you want to win. And you want to get the smooch at the end. So then it's like, okay, then you got to, you know, just game theory it out and, you know, walk away like the hero. Just like, right. like, like <laughs> And just jam like eight sticks of butter in your mouth. <laughs> and you somehow salvaged that into a kiss. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you guys are married to this day and you have a couple kids, right? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah, right. Yep. <laughs> uh, the craziest infiltration you had was uh, the prank show for a celebrity. And you just, this is on This American Life, too. I listened to yeah. it. It's, it's so good. So just, just set up because you, you responded to a Craigslist ad. Um, yeah, yeah, saying yeah. that it was a prank show for a celebrity, right? Yeah, it just said celebrity prank show, and they wouldn't tell you who it was in the ad. So I sent him, you know, sent him like my clips from Lie Detector and you know Judge Joe Brown and and all that, and and then they said, okay, you're hired, uh, but we can't tell you who the celebrity is until the first day of shooting. And then it's like, okay, uh, this, you know, and my mind's thinking, you know, oh, is it like? you know, vanilla ice or ha ha ha, I can't believe your cast of vanilla ice, ha ha ha, ha right. ha ha. And, and it's like, no, no, uh, the celebrity is uh, OJ Simpson. And, and then it's like, yeah, so I get there and like the first, so again, I was living in San Francisco, drive to LA, go to the production office. And the first thing they said to me, like all non-ironic seriousness, they said, uh, Harmon, uh, we just want to tell you, um, we, we really can't mention the murders. <laughs> People usually start off uh, yeah, yeah, jobs like that, right? Uh, okay, <laughs> That's no, how most jobs start. Stay on the murder rate. <laughs> <laughs> you sent a photo of you. Uh, and, uh, here, let me just bring it up. You and uh, OJ. And oh, boy. Pals. It's, it's, it's horrifying. That's absolutely <laughs> horrifying oh my God. so many reasons there's so many reasons are you taller than him actually no he was sitting down oh, okay all right <laughs> oh man and so the least convincing like old white guy makeup too i mean it's not it's, even yeah. close it's not very good yeah uh, it, it was like i kind of just made oj look like a horrific burn victim <laughs> <laughs> so i watched you you sent over because juiced it's called juiced and it's hard to find like yeah. I, it, I couldn't find it anywhere and there's like one on ebay for 95 dollars oh wow and you said VHS uh, tape uh, D, the dvd dvd oh, right. okay yeah. Yeah. i think it was like it's supposed to be a direct to dvd yeah it was like a pay-per-view a pay-per-view that's what yeah. it was. and then direct dvd sales but i think somehow that got pulled or yeah. something because yeah. it wasn't a good idea <laughs> but it wasn't i watched it the other night and it just wasn't very well thought out now clearly you you weren't on the writing staff of this right you just showed up to do prank stuff right I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah 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 i mean i was just like hired for a couple days and then they go oh uh, they kept me for like two weeks um yeah they're, they're, they had a breakdown of the gag so you get that and it was like everything was contingent on something happening and then oj simpson pops out that was kind of the part like and, and like oj didn't really have like second city improv skills so we <laughs> he'd pop out and he'd just be oh hi hi nice nice to nice meet you nice to meet you <laughs> You know, it's like the big shock that hey, it's OJ. You know, and it's like, oh, hi, hi, nice to meet you. And then in a lot of them, he was already there. He was already like there. It wasn't even like a shock that it was OJ. It wasn't like yeah. he pulled off the mask and said, I'm OJ. It wasn't that. It was just like, I'm OJ, and I've been here the entire time. Just like <laughs> this, this clip here. They're, so they're selling a house, it's like a, it's an open house for a, a real estate company, and they keep knocking over this vase and then blaming other people for it. And yeah. then at one point you come in, uh, you, your, job, your role is to come in and yell at people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then at one point you come in and throw up for no reason at all. <laughs> really? You come in and throw up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm just like, oh, he has the best job. <laughs> and did you, give, you come call it OJ Simpson, uh, Danny Glover, was it? Yeah, yeah. So I, I was like being like the owner of the house and there was like a real estate thing, like you said, and uh, the person showing the house knocks over a vase. And I come out all irate and like OJ is one of the people looking at the house for some reason. <laughs> And I'm like, what? Who? Who invited Danny Glover in here? Oh, Mr. <laughs> Danny Glover thinks he's being clever, knocking over my base, huh, Mr. Lethal Weapon? 
<laughs> and O'Day was like, I'm not Danny Glover. He's like, okay, Mr. Lethal Weapon, Danny Glover, <laughs> knocking over my bit. And he's like, no, no, I'm not Danny Glover. It was like, it was actually, so it was like, again, another premise of Juice was um, almost all the bits ended with me arguing with OJ. <laughs> <laughs> like, again, not, nothing was thought out. No, was, yeah. Not fully planned, yeah. I, I pulled a clip. I pulled a clip from the real estate scene, and uh, <laughs> it, this is how they edited it too. Like it, it's mm -hmm. the editing is so confusing. It's just like they just throw. Yeah. So much you said this might have been the worst show you've ever seen, Joe. You texted me. And well, I, I yes, it was. So, it was infuriating, and then at the end, it just kind of bummed me out for the rest of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Let's watch a clip. All right. To to buy four. Oh Jesus. Jesus. Did I do that? I want to know who did this. You're tight. Well, she did it. She did it. I uh, No, I didn't do it. You did it, ma'am. I'm sorry. Someone did it. Mason's is just going break itself. If I get it, I didn't even feel it if I touched it. I did not know it was on the corner there. Okay, well, if she didn't do it, then yeah, uh, I think I'm going to leave did it. and not look at your house. I, I, I didn't hard 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 feel touching that at all. Uh, As an actor, or, he can afford to buy you a new I'm place. not an actor. I'm not Danny Glover. <laughs> You okay? How did you do that? How did you do that? Oh shoot, the owner is going to be so mad. People will know about it. But what's the big deal? Well, I, he's going to be so mad. His rabbits jump around and stuff. There, there are rabbits and dogs oh, out there. Oh, oh Jesus, man. Sweetheart, come on. Jesus, man. If I didn't hurt you, I wouldn't be able to touch him at all. Ma'am, may I show you something? May I show you something? I don't know. <laughs> but you see that there? That's a camera, and you've just been juiced. <laughs> it's a TV show. <laughs> uh -huh. It's a candy camera TV show. <laughs> you've just okay. been juiced. So, oh so the, the poor, so <laughs> somebody knocked over the vase, blamed her. She said, I didn't do it. And then she's, yeah. that, that was her being juiced. Yeah. She's like, OK, I said I didn't do it, and I didn't do it. OK, you've been juiced. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um... And that was probably, that's not even the least funniest of the gags that ended oh. up. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I skimmed through it. I couldn't watch it all the way. I have to watch it with somebody. Sometimes I have trouble like watching something by myself. Right. I need, I need like Nick to be there or something so that we can both. Uh, yeah, the, the one that people talk about is OJ posing as a used car salesman, trying to steer people to buy a white Ford Bronco, which he ad-libbed on set and says has great escapability. Yes, I you know, because like he's got oh, sense boy. of humor about that thing that happened. Yeah, you know? water so, under the uh, bridge. Yeah, yeah we can all laugh at it now. <laughs> yeah, despite the fact that when he was in the Bronco chase, he was holding a gun to his own head. Right. Oh, so but it's funny that. now. It's all yeah, but now with a little time and distance. <laughs> it's just like oh, now it's just hilarious. And it wasn't that much time after it either. Really, that was what two thousand early two thousand four was two thousand and uh, five ish. Yeah. So it was like 10 yeah, years the, later. Yeah, yeah, so 10 yeah, years yeah, later. Yeah, it was like exactly 10 years after. So it was like, uh, oh, it, how it was forgiven. Three years before he actually did go to prison. So I want to ask you more more uh, OJ questions, but like we, yeah. we had a, in one of our exercise video montages, I don't know, early on, we'd had this one, which is um, yeah. OJ Simpson's Minimum Maintenance uh, Fitness for Men. And then uh, in the office, I think Joe mm -hmm. pointed this out, we actually have two versions. We have the same workout, but one, this one's the subpoenaed edition ah. with uh, controversial outtakes on them and uh, behind the scenes footage. We've never watched it before. We've never watched it before either. And then we figured we, we were going to have you on. That was a good time to, yeah, yeah. to pop it in. Well, here's the thing, too. I realized that this is, I think, because it has a number on it, I think this was from when I was at the Letterman show. Like, uh -huh. we just, we would get celebrity videos. And I think this came from that library. And uh -huh. when Letterman retired, they gave us the video collection. So that's why I think, that's where I think we got this one. Okay. And, but here's the thing. I don't know if this was ever commercially released because there's a thing over it the whole time that says not for resale, mm -hmm. whatever, throughout the whole thing. That's what Juiced had on too. That's what really? your copy of Juice. Oh, had yeah. On. Yeah. Well, the minute, like, Juice, I knew that it was edited. Again, I went and I played the um, call to production or whoever was releasing it and go, I'm a journalist. I want to write about Juice. Could you send me a screener copy? Because I, I 
didn't know for sure that this would ever see the light of day. So I just wanted to make sure I got a copy. Yes. Of it. So that's how I got it. So, so yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe this will explain it. But anyway, like what we did with our edit of like the original one was like, Oh, there's parts where he's like, let's get that blood flowing. And like, it's just, it's incriminating. And it was shot two weeks before the murder. So um, they tried to capitalize on that, I guess, with this VHS release that was like, you know, bonus footage. And, and like, I'll just show you, I, it's 20 minutes of bonus footage, but a lot of them are repeated clips that some editor who wasn't very good tried to like mm-hmm. make funny and, and repeat things. It's a terrible edit, but uh, here, here's a little bit of that. And... Gene Mike. Watching oh. my dreams yeah. turn into yeah. ashes. What's the matter? Am I doing something wrong? What's the matter? Am I doing something wrong? What's the matter? Am I doing something wrong? That's not my edits. Those are hot. That's how it actually, the whole video begins like that. I'm not editing this at all. The video that you're about to view was filmed from May 25th to 27th, 94. These clips are filmed at O.J. Simpson's Brentwood home just prior to the double murder of his ex-wife, Nicole Simpson and Ronald Goldman. The following outtakes Hi, are David. intriguing comments made by OJ, some of which were subpoenaed by the courts, possibly determined his state of mind. You be the judge. <laughs> but I'm done for this, boy. This, this is happening. Yeah. All right, All right. Roll, rolling. Roll camera, please. Just like a body. <laughs> he's, he's hitting on um, one of the models off screen. Yeah. Goes, I, just, I just like her body. She hurt Shh. Hey, I gotta Do be honest. This? I don't know her well enough to be in love with Ish. her. What's the matter? Am I doing something wrong? Yeah. Country girl. Settled this girl eats stuff I don't down. eat. And rolling. But I eat something tape. that she's never eaten. Beating. <laughs> rolling. <laughs> Settled. Action. Going back, go back. I've been doing a lot better since I've been doing that basketball shuffle for my workout video. <laughs> Not bad for an old football player. Eat your heart out, she kills. Oh, you dick! <laughs> Tennis, anyone? Oh, yes. I like that. That backhand going. I was deadly with my backhand. Oh, that top spin backhand. This seems like a gag that would have been on Juiced. A fat guy and somebody nursing a baby next to him on a plane. (laughs) Jesus, Juice. You don't have to kill yourself. Okay, if you don't believe me, good. Okay, if you don't believe me, good. Okay, if you don't believe me, good. Like, why was that incriminating? Now, here's where it got says, a lot of stress. And... It said audio deleted, and then it said subpoenaed. So apparently, yeah, they... um, I think our, they actually showed a clip of this during his case because he makes some joke about like hitting his wife or something like that in the ex. Like he was doing some move, and it's like you might if your wife gets out of hand, you might want to do that or something. Really? So they oh. actually showed a bit. I remember this like. Yeah, they showed a bit of this clip. It was just like... Interesting. So, audio yeah. deleted. They couldn't include it on this so, video that they're selling to be but, incriminating. But yeah. they're, they're clearly cashing in on this. The producer must yes. have been like, oh, we have all this footage. Let's like try to make a buck off of yeah. it. Yeah. Let's repackage yeah. it, add some okay. outtakes. God. <laughs> and if you got a lot of stress and some anger, try to visualize. You know, with me, I always visualize uh, Mount St. Helens, believe it or not. Oh, this transition. I'm killing. I'm killing. I'm killing. I, Jesus. Jesus. That's it. That's uh, all I could stomach from the 23 minutes yeah. of tantalizing outtakes that were not for resale. <laughs> wow. What was, what was it like, Harmon, though, working uh, with OJ? Um, so first, like when you first meet OJ, it's like, um, he's like the kind of guy who works the room, you know, make sure he shakes everyone's hand, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, just typical social path sort of uh you know, dynamic where it's like, look, look, how, how can I kill people? Look how nice I am. I'm yeah. everyone. How- but he is a charming guy from what I've heard, right? Yeah. Like, he is like a, a charmer, right? At one time, yeah. But then it was just like, it just became like clear. Like he would just like, you know, we're, no one's getting paid, you know, hardly like just anything. I, is that even a sentence? We're just getting paid very little. And yeah. he would just like not turn up or just you know, be late. Like the first day, uh, there's like some gag on a golf course and we're waiting for him. And then we see him like drive by in a golf cart. And then he's like, oh, I'm just going to play a few rounds and I'll be back. And then he would just leave people like just waiting, you know? <laughs> and it's just like, oh man. You know? and it's like, 
That, but this wasn't his idea, though. Juiced wasn't his idea. Oh, was it? It, was probably, it was probably somebody else pitched it. Yeah, to him, right? yeah. It's the guy who brought the world bum fights and backyard wrestling. <sighs> oh, well, it's a name you can trust then. Yeah, so just, I think, places in hell. Uh, oh, yeah. Stay in the producer it's, of Juiced. It's, the, it's the devil himself, back. right? It's the actual devil. Yeah, so then you have to go, okay, who's the the extremely evil person in this? Is it OJ for agreeing to do this? Or is it the person who brought it together and said, I'm going to make a prank show and have double murder OJ Simpson pull pranks? It, it wasn't he, uh, didn't he show up drunk for one too? Yeah, so that was like, you know, he was like, he, he would just be like, so um, it was like in Las Vegas. So the gag was he's in like an Elvis Presley outfit. No, I think he just put it on because he, just they had it and he just turned up and in and he was really drunk so um he was supposed to play like a wacky motel clerk you know like look out here comes wacky motel clerk OJ. you know but then he just turned up like really drunk so they just like kind of put him on a stool in the corner of the room so it's like segue to like you can't have oj pulling the pranks at least you can have oj like uh near some pranks while they're being cool, <laughs> you know? and then you did all the heavy lifting right <laughs> yeah yeah so then so okay so he's in that elvis so people would turn up i think like the gag was like um oh your cards declined i'm gonna have to rip it up sorry about that that was like the gag and and then oj would like lean in and he'd be really drunk and he'd go like to the couple he'd go hey i'm oj hey, do you recognize me <laughs> Oh That's man, he was, oh, that, was, that was that was that was that a was big bag, but that was just him <laughs> drunk. But yeah. I was in recognition from strangers. I noticed in Juice though that that scene wasn't in there. They showed like quick clips of it at the end. I went looking for it, but they yeah. showed quick clips at the end of that. Yeah, because there, there's just no joke. It was just people just get really upset. And it's like, your my vacation's ruined. Maybe that's what juicing is, is just um, yeah. upsetting people. Yeah. <laughs> Mildly inconveniencing people. Did yeah. anything ever go wrong on any of your TV infiltrations? Like, where, where somebody, did you show up to any and then they kicked you out, like, before you uh, got Not the TV ones. I mean, again, it's like, usually they want you to be that person. So um, they're happy to have you. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, our job's done. We found that person. And the more outrageous you are, like, that's that's making some good TV. So it's totally. like, they, they want it, you know? So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man, it's so good. Well, um, yeah, we want to talk about what you're working on now. Because yeah. you, you talked to us about a, yeah. another documentary you're working on. Yeah, so this is um, stylistically, it's a follow-up to uh, Sudden Birth. Um, there, And I, I know you guys have showed this video being that I've talked to you about it. Um, there's, a, there's a video made in 1994 called Law Enforcement's Guide to Satanic Cults. It was, um, it was made for police officers, uh, law, you know, uh, police departments to look at the case, to show, look for signs in your community of satanic activity going on. Yeah, and I have, I have, for some reason, we don't have it on VHS. We have the DVD of it. Uh, oh, so wow. yeah, what, what does the packaging look like? It's like, I don't know if you can see it there, but it's law enforcement guy to say Chan hmm. Colts. You got the narrator there, and we'll see well, him too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Coulter. Um, yep. Yeah. And this is by, you know, the thing I think we talked about is it's by Lenny McGill's The Gun Video hmm. catalog. We have a lot of those like martial arts and gun yeah. yes. videos all by Lenny McGill who produced it. So you're yeah. getting to the bottom of this video? Is, is that the... Um, no, so there's like three parts to the video. So act one is just, um, I interviewed... So first I tried to interview the director, um, a Devin Dehaven or something like fake name like that, <laughs> who actually went on to make like big music videos, like did like the Kiss tour and... Oh, he's a legit Montreux. director then. Yeah, so he actually went legit. So he made this like when he was like 19 years old. And um, so I emailed him through his website go, and then I told him what I was working on. He's like, oh... He got so indignant, <laughs> you know, it's just like, I don't even remember, you know, working on those videos at that time. It's like, oh, come on, you have, you don't remember law enforcement's guide to satanic cults. <laughs> That's something like that would stick with you, yeah. Yeah, so I found the production manager who was like his right-hand man. So I like, I found him on Facebook and within like, 10 seconds he messages me back, yeah, I'll talk to you. <laughs> so, uh, so I interviewed him and got the whole scoop of uh, behind the scenes. And then 
Um, I contacted Lenny McGill, and who, who owns the largest Glock store in, in the country. The largest Glock store? Glock store? Yeah, guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> he's the gun guy and all the gun videos. Gun video. Yeah, wow. he had like over 500 gun videos. Um, so I had to talk to him for an hour about the origins of his Glock store to get <laughs> Six minutes. Oh yeah, we've been there. Well, let me let me show a little. Let me show a little bit of the video first. So yeah, people, yeah, if they yeah, haven't yeah, seen yeah. it in our show or anything, this will sure. give them an idea. And Joe, I don't think you. I don't know if you've seen all this. Uh, I haven't. No, you put together this montage, so yeah. I've never seen this. Okay. One. Yeah. I'm Gordon Coulter. For many years, I served as a law enforcement officer Cop in Satanic. I want that to be my Chiron for any TV appearance. Wait, back it up. I, didn't see it. I missed it. Cop oh. slash pastor. <laughs> Together at last. Yep. Yeah, it's not pastor slash cop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In satanic occultism, that which is good is bad, and that which is bad is good. Eric Pryor is a former satanic high priest turned Christian who now spends his time educating people about the dark side of satanic cults. When I was a practicing occultist... It... I want to say that we talked about this, Harmon, but... Yeah. Uh, the occult symbols he's finding in this very family-friendly park are a little too convenient. So. And, and, and this, uh, as a trivia note, this is the same park seen in the opening credits of Full House. Oh, uh, really? it, so it, a, yeah. a real den of sin we're talking about right here. And which, uh, which rockabilly band does he play in? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Practicing here we go. occultists, it, oftentimes I would come into this park and uh, practice on various different holidays. Uh, lunar holidays and occultic holidays and we'd actually have rituals in the park when we didn't have a space to do rituals indoor. Well see here you go. Um, upon entering the park I mean you can see they've already got started. They had to uh, digitally okay. erase that out of the full house intro. Uh, this is a <laughs> pentacle but now right over here I can see on a tree here there's a there's a uh, inverted cross. Now this is satanic. Oh, well, looky here! This is a very oh, generic yeah. symbol. Well, uh, well, well. <laughs> let me see. It's well, it's actually fairly fresh too. Um, I, I wish they tasted it. This. <laughs> well, see, this is this is what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, what you're looking at here is called Voodoo Vivi. You look at these dumpsters. See, this is how they talk to each other. Okay, here you go. Shem Hemparash. Okay. This is uh, the way occultists tell each other, hey, we're Satanists and we're partying. Normally using blessed communion wafers, symbolic of the body of Christ, Satanists insert them into the vagina of the altar or physically stomp, thus desecrating Christian beliefs. February 25th signals I Beltane, have this sync to my Google ceremony. calendar, my iCal. Communions are held with blood filling calendar. the chalice. Animal dismemberment and sacrifices are common to this ceremony. I forgot, Saturday, to wish you guys a happy, <laughs> I forgot to wish you guys a happy uh, Beltane. It's February 23rd. Oh, happy That's Beltane right, to you, too. Yeah. Came, came and went. <laughs> Sneaks up on me every year. <laughs> You'll note on our model, the <laughs> pentagram or the inverted pentagram on the right and the left side of the upper chest. Another thing that is oftentimes done in ritualistic homicides is a penis is placed inside the mouth of the deceased person. I'll Let's play. stop. Can you back up? Yeah. Can you back up so we can see the coffee cup on his, on his shirt? Yeah, there? I love it. <laughs> right? Yeah, I don't know if you can see it. Right there, yeah. Yeah, there's the coffee cup on the shirt. It's okay. like, wear that shirt today. Only in the bikini <laughs> model scene. Is this too loud, honey? Is this too loud for Are there the fireworks? Are the fireworks going off above the coffee cup? Yeah, just patterns, cool patterns, it looks like. Yeah. Okay, got it. <laughs> Let's stop this heinous crime heinous. that's going on in the name of the devil. There he is. There you go. So they, I mean, they probably did all that spray paint themselves, right? They're the oh, ones. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's paint. all like the same spray paint. And exactly. It's, it's the same. And they know exactly where it is. And, and I, I cut that, but he, it's like, he's just walking a path and everywhere you go, he's not going yeah. into the woods. It's like, yeah. oh, here's this there. There's that there. And look, yeah. look here. This is where the ritual was. It's like, uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So the production manager said that former Satanist Eric Pryor kind of freaked them out. <laughs> I could see that. Yeah. yeah. I think he was, he was playing it up a bit for the camera, but it was like a uh, lot made the stuff that made the cutting room floor kind of freaked them out. 
Hmm. Here's what I think you should do for the documentary. I think you should take all the producers from mm -hmm. that movie and bring them under the show lie detector. <laughs> and and then you could that way you can do a double <laughs> infiltration here with both. Yeah. Of them. So, <laughs> anyways, we we then it gets like we twist the story because um, this was actually shown to police departments to go. All right, here's your Satanist. You know, they listen to heavy metal music. They dress like this, and then we twist it to like people actually went to prison because because of this. Like um, the West Memphis Three, and then there was yeah. like. Um, uh, uh, like all these kind of like daycare cases where they said it was like satanic activity going on and you know people went like for decades to prison and you know finally got released so right. we twisted to so I interviewed this woman who covered the West Memphis 3 case um, and, and in all those cases um, and then also um, my friend Jordan works for The Intercept who covered this case for 10 years in Austin uh, and then this couple that ran a daycare center finally got released from prison. And in all those cases, they would have come into the courtroom, a guy like Eric Pryor, take the stand and tell them, this is what Satan is, like non-accredited people take the yeah, stand. And they'd be admissible yeah. in court. And, you know, you're on the jury in, you know, West Memphis, Arkansas listening to the satanic expert yes. and these people go to prison. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Like all of the Satan videos we have too, during the mm -hmm. height of the satanic yeah. panic uh, were are they always have their expert who is a former Satanist. They've reformed their ways. And then it's just like, well, they made a uh, baby's skin into candles. You see, it's like this, you have quite the vivid imagination on these former Satanists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the third twist or the, the, the final twist of our story is it brings us to modern day and QAnon that think that there's a Satanist cabal in, in you know, of, of Democrats led by Hillary Clinton and Pizzagate and they're trying and Trump's trying to bring down the Satanists. So I interviewed this guy in Atlanta who actually puts up QAnon billboards. Like he is so into QAnon that he pays money to put up QAnon billboards. Wow. And so I just got inside his brain for an hour. Ooh. But, I, but I, I bet they just like the idea of like, there's this like evil dragon that we have to slay. It's like, it, makes, yeah. it probably makes their mundane lives way more exciting just like I, black I'm a, and white. yeah yeah, yeah. Just, like, just evil out there and i'm doing my best to try mm. to bring it down yep. and i'm working with other people i have purpose now yeah yeah so first of all a uh, lot of confirmation bias going on <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people reading the exact same websites to get their information to come to the exact same who, who is it because those websites are you know the uh you know, mainstream websites, which is, uh, as, as we know, have been infiltrated by the CIA. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Fake yeah. news. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of the trajectory for it. So it's, well, we start I, out fun, funny. We're meeting, you know, Gordon Coulter, uh, Nick's telling us, you know, great stories about, you know, how this is sort of, you know, every year, I feel like, like, as you brought up, this is like in the, in the, you know, 60s, it was the hippies and, you know, then it was Satanists and then it sort of went away. And now then people went to prison and now it's back and now it's, it's back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't know if you're going to come out to New York anytime soon, but when I, you I, do, in fact, I, I am at this moment. I live in Brooklyn. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, San Francisco. Yeah. yeah, no, no. I used to live in San Francisco. I kept the 415 phone number, but uh, what? Oh, so yeah, you're no, no, for eight years. Yeah. This I'm whole time. Here. I thought you were in San Francisco too. Oh, yeah. I was going to say you should. No, you Nick, should, you, uh, you did my show a long time ago at videology. Um, when I had a video. Yes, so. yeah, that's yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, 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 for yeah, some yeah. reason, I didn't put two and two together that you were yeah, still yeah. here. I, was, I, I mean, know. that might have been like about six or seven years ago when I first moved out here. But uh, and Is yeah, it, Are you, are you seriously in Brooklyn or are we being juiced right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm in Brooklyn. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Joe, go ahead. What were you going to say? <laughs> I was going to say, you should come down to the office because we have so yeah. many police instructional videos over there. Yeah. Just yeah. like out by the same production companies and everything, and yeah, oh, from Lenny McGill's production company. Oh, we got we got a bunch out of the Lenny McGill's. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, he was an interesting character. Somebody somebody sent us a huge box of them too. Yeah. They sent us like twenty different police training videos. I don't know, and it was like an like yeah. I don't think that they said 
it was anonymous who, who sent mm, it. Yeah. yeah so we have no idea who sent it. Yeah. Uh, and so in addition to this project, what else, yeah. uh, where else can people see, uh, find your stuff? Yeah, so um, Scott and I, our, our latest video is our documentary is on The New Yorker. Um, so I, look, they put a name in it, something like a spy's, um, a spy changes his son's life, something to that effect. We, we had a different name for it, but they changed it that. So uh -huh. the premise of that video was we had this um, uh, friend, he's from East Germany, and his dad left him when he was little, and they found out that his dad worked for Stasi. And not only he worked for Stasi, he became a double agent. Wait, what's Stasi? Stasi is like the secret police that Putin used to be a, a part of, like the secret police in East Germany. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So then uh, he he defected to the West. The CIA gave him a new identity, and he moved to America with his new identity. Ended up working on Wall Street, became a Wall Street fat cat, reunited with his son, and then plot twist uh, ended up like taking his life. So yeah, yeah. So wow. it's like, uh, so that one just came out about a month ago. Uh, you can find it on the New Yorker site. And then Scott and I also we have a uh, podcast called Comedy History One Hundred and One. So we just do deep dives into the history of comedy. I believe our last episode was on the history of the Chevy Chase show. So. Oh, <gasps> and I, spent, I spent the summer watching the Chevy Chase show. I've been obsessed with the Chevy Chase. Yeah. Show. Like, um. Yes. So did you like all the episodes are on YouTube? Like, yeah. So I watched all of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you, and, and they are as bad as you think. They're and, worse. They're worse. The, but, the but, Goldie Hawn episode. The first episode. You 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 get it strangely. <laughs> You want to see more? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. We, a friend of mine and I this summer, we watched every single night because we just wanted more, and we would find, like, the yeah. lowest res. <laughs> We'd still watch it. <laughs> it just... what, what really stuck out about you, like, uh, from the Chevy Chase show? Oh, <laughs> uh, just how uh, made uh, – it felt like they were making it up as they went along, and they were absolutely making it up as they went along. Like, the one where uh, they were going to have – somebody was going to have dinner with Pamela Anderson at the <laughs> end. Do you remember that one? Did you see I that one? I only saw a couple. I did only did a okay. couple of deep dives. So yeah. And they, they had this countdown to when these people were going to have dinner with Pamela Anderson. Mm -hmm. And then they ran late on time, so they had to do it over the credits. And it was just these people showed up, and they were having dinner with Pamela Anderson, and nothing happened. And Chevy was there, and he was just kind of riffing and, like, taking the dinner rolls and putting them on. It was just, like, <laughs> trying to be, fun, like, making it up as they went along. It's yeah. fascinating. It's just oh, a train wreck. I got to oh. listen to your podcast. I'm going to totally incredible. listen to it. Yeah, please do. Please yeah. do. So, uh, yeah, yeah. It's so good. And you have a bunch of – you have a ton of books up, too. Yeah, yeah. So, actually, um, the last one came out last year. It's called Tribe Spotting, Undercover Culture Stories. And with that, I collaborated with cartoonist Keith Knight, who just um, new series woke is based on his cartoons. So. Yeah, just saw that. Yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. So oh, another cool. again another San Francisco um, uh, cartoonist. So knew him from back in the San Francisco days. And then, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just so like all your stuff's on HarmonLeon.com, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Exactly. And people should watch like the the. Uh, the judge joe brown the full thing i just cut together a couple clips but like there's so much stuff on there so um well i'm happy to know that we're neighbors now we should hang yeah. out sometime yeah and, and hopefully yeah. you can start doing live shows again when we can and uh yeah <laughs> yeah fingers crossed yes yeah cool. well hank hank leon so thanks so much for joining us <laughs> yeah hey, i have one i have one more thing to say to yeah, you yeah. carmen you've been juiced <laughs> see the camera? You got him. See, the, you see the camera right in front of you? <laughs> you got him. It's a real jail. We mildly inconvenienced you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's see your raviolis. Show us 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 your raviolis. Thanks again to Harmon for coming on. Fascinating dude. And, it really uh, is. I love that he lives in our neighborhood. Like he's close to us now. I thought he was in San Francisco that entire time. Now we yeah. can like hang out with him and have him come over. And yeah, yeah. I, I hope things go back to normal so we can hang out. Um, yeah. Uh, we we were running a little short on time, but uh, I know that George had an update on the IMG videos. That uh, do you want to get into this, George? Well, sure. Well, okay. Well, just, let me just explain what IMGs yeah. are for people who haven't seen it. IMGs. We call them IMGs. They're uh, accidental uploads onto YouTube. And so you, if you type in IMG and then four numbers, like a bunch of videos that weren't intended to be uploaded will 
up here, like maybe 15 to 20. And so that's been the new thing is that we, we harvest IMGs. We have Melinda's harvesting IMGs. And I can't remember who found this one that George is going to dive into, but it's already become a classic. It's like four seconds long and there are only like nine words. Rocks are done. What is it? How's it go? Rocks are time, done. Rocks are done. Time to sleep. Bye. Right. So yeah. Let, let's watch that. Let's watch the original, the classic, okay. the one that everybody is clamoring for, really. Rocks are done. Got to sleep. Bye. Okay. So <laughs> on the on the uh, on the Melinda verse, the Facebook fan page. Um, Shelly Watson asked uh, somebody to post that, and then Steve posted it for her. And then uh, I think her and I both clicked through to see the guy who had posted that. And so I watched all 53 of his 15 second. 53? You said a couple. I, I, I saw like two or three. I didn't know he had 53 of them. Well, I, I, he had 52 that were like 15 seconds and one that was 10 minutes. And I watched that one too. Um, <laughs> it's just him, him riding a motorcycle. How was Anyhow. everybody else's weekend? Uh, that's what George did. Well, between that and the ALF reruns, I, yeah, I had a <laughs> yeah. full weekend. Oh, but yeah. um, but uh, the, the guy's name is Frank. He's a husband, an outdoorsman, a motorcycle enthusiast, and the grandfather of a toddler named Georgie. And oh. this guy is the, the king of 15-second videos. So let's just watch a cross-section of his extremely concise Yes. YouTube. Greatest hits. YouTube. Yes. Here we go. Frank, Frank's greatest hits. Here we go. First day of the vlog. Headed to Montana. I got to drive. Bye. <laughs> At Flathead Lake in Montana. This vlogging thing is taking up entirely too much of my time. Got to go. Bye. <laughs> day five of the Montana trip. Riding the Sun Road at Glacier Park. Got to ride bike. <laughs> Day one of the home vlog in Fernley, Montana. No wait, Fernley, Nevada. Got to paint. Bye. <laughs> Got it all painted. Got to go move some rocks. Bye. Yes, oh. rocks. Big rocks. Got to go. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Got it unloaded. Got to go play with some bikes. Bye. Got to do some carb work. On a DR650, <laughs> gotta go, bye. <laughs> Done with a 450 for now. Gotta go build a rocket, bye. <laughs> yes, I had to build a rocket for Georgie's birthday party. <laughs> He's artistic. Now I gotta go work on the bike for the mile. Gotta go, bye. <laughs> All gassed up, gotta go for a test ride, bye. Gotta drive. Bye. Yeah, so, it, so it ends sort of ominously with him, oh. uh, him in the hailstorm. No, he's I, fine. But uh, were there, I, I were those, it up that way. Were those all IMGs? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so I mean, so title them, but right. So IMGs okay. are just like the default naming. Um, yeah. By okay. whatever camera you use. So those weren't accidental uploads, but no, they. No, no. Were, uh, but they. Yeah. But he they just didn't. Titled. He right. just didn't know how to title it, so he just IMG twenty one seventy four. That sounds good. Or maybe he was electing to uh, seed the IMG mines. Well, you know? okay, that's possible. But here's the thing: I feel like he is a gettable guest for VCR party. Um, I would be interested in talking to him more, and just maybe just have it be brief. Like, hey, we have him on right now. Um, what's going on? Second. And he would just say. <laughs> You know, on VCR party, gotta go. Bye. Yeah, tapes are done. Gotta watch. <laughs> bye. Yeah. Exactly. And it's, but have him on live, build it up for the whole episode, and then have him come on just for ten seconds. George, are you in your mind? Yep, I'll get him. I'll find. All him. right, all right, all right. Yes. And Next our, week, our episode that that night will on YouTube will just be called IMG. You know one. 120, 131. <laughs> yes, yes. We won't even title it. I think it'll just be IMG 131, and that'll be episode 131. Oh, they'll get lots of clicks. By the way, last week, uh, Nick, you said that we, we got fewer clicks than usual on last week's show. The or... lowest we've ever had, <laughs> and including our first episode when no one even knew we were doing this. So we got fewer, and what, yes. but what was the reason for that? It was a... The thumbnail that you chose when you uploaded it was tongs with a lab-grown penis in a jar. Okay. It was among the grossest things, not only that you've ever shown, but 
especially as the thumbnail that you're when you're trying to get people to click on something the thumbnail is so important well but here's but i remember you telling me on the chase mitchell show that's one of our biggest shows ever because it has a dong on the cover right like it has, it has a, a dog. It has a cartoon duck and two cartoon naked people with the duck looking confused on it. Oh, there's okay, but there's a cartoon dong there, right? This animated. is kind of animated, but this is kind of a cartoonish dong. That's what I was thinking. That was my thinking. I was like, I remember you telling me that, and I was like, oh, dongs uh, equal uh -huh. views. Okay, you might be and taking so, the wrong lessons from the uh, the thumbnail advice. I've since changed it because I was like, I, I did see the numbers. I was like, well, that is pretty low, actually. <laughs> And you think, you think it is that people see that and they're like, I don't want to watch this Absolutely. My, our ALF show, which no one cares about, got way more views than that. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it has to be the thumbnail. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to find the, the, the uh, thumbnail here that I chose. Oh, yeah, I it's I'll real gross. It. Yeah. Hey, uh, real quickly, I wanted to mention that um, we're doing our only live show of 2020 uh, this Thursday, two days from now in... Um, Mahoning, uh, the Mahoning Drive-In Theater in Pennsylvania. And we're excited because we just haven't been out of the house much. Um, and uh, and it's going to be, if you're within a two-hour drive, I'd say make the trip because it's a really cool theater. You can get there early, make a night out of it. It's supposed to be 70 degrees um, and sunny and clear skies. And it's just going to be a great night. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I went there a couple weeks ago and it was awesome. And uh, I highly recommend it. So, and, and like, it's going to be weird too, because like, we've never done a drive-in. I, I can't even picture what the show's going to be like. Are, am, am I going to be in my car and you're going to be in your car? No, no, we won't. We'll be on a stage six feet apart doing the show as normal, but everybody else will be in their cars. And apparently when, when people are doing comedy shows at drive-ins now, people honk to show that they found something funny. So I'm curious to see like what happens, like which clips are going to get honks and stuff. I think it's going to be an interesting social experience. I mean, I heard a lot of like uh, alarms going off, you know, like <laughs> unintentionally. And uh, those too, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's going to be a weird show for sure. So, but historic. So we hope you'll join yep. us for that. And uh, what else is coming? Oh, Saturday morning cartoons. We're watching Rubik the Amazing Cube uh, with Keith Garcia. And Rubik, the Amazing Cube, my sister and I watched growing up. It's an actual cube, Rubik's Cube that when solved comes to life and helps solve mysteries. Um, I think that's all that needs to be said about that. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, everybody's going to tune in now. Yeah. Well, uh, the other thing about that is Ron Palillo, who is Horshack on Welcome Back, Cotter, was the voice of the cube. And uh, I didn't know that until doing the show. So that's just one of the many things you'll learn by watching Saturday Morning. I feel like they squandered their money getting him because you can't even tell it's him, A, and B. Yeah. Like, you could have you gotten anybody because they speed, they speed up his voice. Yeah. And he hardly even talks. And we slowed down the cube talking, and you can tell it's Horseshack, and it's kind of disturbing. So yeah. tune in yeah. for that. Um, we're doing an EP on Thursday with Reese from Australia. And we're watching a video. Joe hasn't seen this, but it's Playboy's Roller Disc disco and pajama party that actually aired on abc on a friday night in 1979 and sounds pretty uh, sounds pretty sexual to me uh it has to be seen to be believed but i'll just say it's not that sexy uh, nick do, do you think that when you're watching it your tongue will hang out and you'll be like kind of going like <laughs> yeah i'll be a tex be avery that? wolf yeah. <laughs> absolutely uh anything else guys willie's uh yeah. we got a birthday we got a birthday oh yeah oh, there's oh. a birthday yeah who's Judah. who's Judah, oh, yeah? it's not his birthday, but Judah, the doctor, uh, had a request for his uh, wife, Teddy. She's I love that a doctor watches our show. I, know. I really do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the only one who clicked on that thumbnail. Um, <laughs> his like, wife, oh, this episode looks good. His wife, Teddy, is a big fan and would love to revisit her favorite news blooper about the Heisman winner who died. And Gladly. So I won't give away the... Uh, what the yeah, this, I think this is from Atlanta, right? Uh, yeah. Or Athens. No, it's Athens. Georgia, right? Yeah, Athens, yeah I think Georgia. it's an Atlanta station, but he's mentioning an Athens uh, death. Paul Shields, here he is. Take it away. Frank Sinkowitz, the 1942 Heisman Trophy winner from Georgia, died early today at his Athens home. He was 70 degrees. Sinkowitz was the first Georgia Bulldog ever to win that coveted trophy. And a correction, Frank Sinkowitz, who died early today at his home in Athens, was 70 degrees. Jim? There it is. Happy birthday. Do you, do you think Jim corrected him? Because the tape cuts off before we, we get that. Do you think Jim was like, you know, did a correction to the correction when he threw to him? 
Uh, I don't think they're paying attention to anything they're saying. No, I think that that guy, he's just been around forever, and I, I think that they don't like to – they don't want to say, hey, you screwed it up a second, to, a second time. <laughs> right. I think they wanted to be nice. So. Hey, what about this? Like, when I die, can you make sure that the uh... – that the obituary says uh, that I died. that you are seventy degrees. Seventy degrees. Yeah. yeah, you got it. Like we got to start making a list of things that we do to do when we die. Right. Like for the other person to do. Like we already know when you die, the photo that's blown up next to your casket will be the shithead hat that you felt <laughs> exactly. in the car wearing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yep. So, yeah. Next, right, next to next to my open it. casket. Next to my open. No, in my open casket, put the shithead hat on my yes. head. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But your lips are kind of like deflated and sewn shut, but you're wearing the shithead hat. There's like some makeup on me. Yeah, yeah. I like, oh, he wore the so Red Robin like. picture next to you. Oh, like, yeah. I didn't ask for that, no. Okay. You're, no, Nick, can we, can we, we'll have the, uh, for, the for memorial. Death. We'll have the wake <laughs> at Red Robin for your death, Nick. Sure, why not? Can we do that? Okay. Prop help. the casket up to, so you're at that angle. Here's okay. what we need to do. We need to come up with a list of all the things that we have to do when all of us die, and yeah, then we got to yeah. bring Anderson in, the lawyer, to make it official so we all do signatures and we all make sure that all these things happen yeah that, the, that's, the some death episode. that's some great content and we'll get those clicks up higher uh <laughs> unlike last week's show so great and we'll put some boobs as a thumbnail so we'll just, <laughs> everybody will click on it can we just do the duck looking at the genitals animated genitals every week not Why don't a we bad do idea that? it's not a bad idea actually i'm uh, just spitballing here yeah uh, all right, well, we'll see what the thumbnail is for this episode. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, all right, we, we done? That's all that's it? That's all that's it. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to end on, uh, God, what are, what are these, the brothers from Arizona, the brothers from Arizona, uh, John and Tim, Nick, help me out. I'm I don't not, know. I don't have the outline in front of me. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, oh, it's they in the do. outline? It's not uh, on the outline. It's not on the outline. Okay. okay. All right. But they're the coolest brothers in Arizona. And they have two common names like Jim and Tim or John and Tim. We should know this, but they do the best stuff, the best songs. And they did one for the club. You remember the club? It was a home movie that I think was also a public access show in North Carolina. We got it from our, our buddy Skip from AV Geeks. And it's this guy who says that the stick that he found is like this ancient relic with superpowers and he's walking around the whole time with this club and it's like a first person shooter game he takes it down to the bar to show his buddies it and they must have been enamored with this video and they decided to make a song out of it and they made a video with it too so the video and the song is theirs they're these these jonathan two guys and are, tim. Jonathan, jonathan and tim I, I gotta write then all right they um they're genius brothers and um yeah you you heard you heard, what I was going to say, we'll be right back right after that. Better luck next time, Chucky. <laughs> Talks are done. Got to sleep. Bye. Talking tulip. Totally tulip. Wow. Let's go worldwide TV. Forget cable. Forget national TV. Let's go worldwide satellite.
Turn, Dr. Selmer will complete the bunion surgery. Yes, those are his pajamas he's wearing. All right, I gotta go. That's all. That's it. Let me see that one. Rocks are done. Gotta sleep. Bye. That's it. That had it done. We did our best. If we'd been prepared, we could have done better. What do you think about Bibra? About what? My nose is for yuck anymore. That's all I'm doing. We'll be right back right after that. And Kurt Polster, the real great guy.